will the Yoruba survive? What is the role of the Yoruba in the global knowledge economy? What is the future of ethnic nationalities within the confines of a nation state? Can the Yoruba be the basis of a globalizing agenda? How do we tackle the youth question? The political knowledge of our people did not transcend the concept of kinship. Their intellectual inquisition did not go beyond what Onomina left for us, the exigencies of it far as a body of knowledge and how it can shape contemporary thinking has never been explored. But even though they were militarily strong and politically sophisticated, there is a limiting intellectual factor in the Yoruba land of the Nigeria that did not prepare the Yoruba for two things that dramatically changed the Yoruba destiny. This thing that changed our destiny from kingdoms and empires made our forefathers very handicapped. What is this thing? The Yoruba land was localized. The localization of knowledge did not prepare our ancestors for what was to come. They were unable to foresee a new political destiny. They were unable to foresee a new economic destiny. The distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have lost two generations to miseducation. They are lost. We can embark on a salvage mission, but the best effort effort we can undertake to the current youth demographic we see is to produce semi-skilled labor. If we must exist as a competitive ethno-nationality in the next hundred years, we must start planning for the child that will be conceived tonight. We must teach them that our culture, our language, and our values can coexist with the openness and cosmopolitanism that is going through the rest of the world. Yoruba of the future can only exist if we tie our ethno-cultural and ethno-national identity that is shaping how we live and we'll be living in the next 200 years to innovation. With all the hypermodality you people go to Dubai to enjoy, has anybody called Dubai the West? Hello, has anybody called Dubai the West? The answer is no. Dubai is about Arabian ethnic nationality. If you have any modicum of doubt about how innovation diffuses the culture of its creators, take a look at Twitter. For our KBS is here, maybe they don't know Twitter. Hey, yeah, Twitter. Can you come and Twitter epitomizes the practicality of the American. It is the best reference to the American drive through culture. It is the philosophy of Orokupo, Irodomuwa. Because on Twitter, you have to convey a message in only 140 words. America or Kishirani, Kusaya Akpalani no Yibu. It is the best reference to their culture. And I would like to tell you, Twitter, every, all the young people, the children that were here earlier, they all use Twitter. Twitter sucks you in. Twitter makes you adopt itself. And when you are adopting Twitter, when you are on Facebook, what are you doing? Can you tell me what you are doing? You are adopting the cultural taste of American ethno-nationalism. What is the Yoruba taste? Yoruba land is the emerging hub of technological innovation in Nigeria, but how are we defining it? A Yoruba man owns a powerful powerhouse called the Naira land. What can we identify as uniquely Yoruba in the ontology of Naira land? Nothing. What Yoruba philosophy drives Naira land? Nothing. My people, innovation is not neutral. Make no mistake about it. Innovation is not neutral. Innovation carries the culture and the associations of those who created it. Innovation is a distinctive purveyor of ethno-nationalism. While we disdain our culture and cultural products,
that globalization has continued to take Western colorations. The spread of global cultural products, popular culture, and the diffusion of knowledge and ideas continues to be predominantly Western. While we face the crisis of legitimation, many of our cultural traditions and products are undergoing the globalizing influence of innovative packaging and free markets are commodifying these things and marking them organic. We now have organic coconut oil. We now have, I bought a pestle and mortar made from granite. The next question, how will social, economic, technological and political trends affect the Yoruba going into the future? I would like to tell you that land resources, technology and human capital has always determined the nature of power. It took China only 66 years of focus, only 66 years of determination, only 66 years of hard work to become an economic powerhouse with enough military and political clout to scare the West. What we need to do now is to have an educated population to have land use reform to boost our productivity and to support institutions that we channel emerging free markets. Good leadership across the states in Yoruba land and institutional reforms are capable of changing the face of Yoruba in just a generation. What is a generation? A generation is only 25 years. Now, the question I asked myself while I was writing this is that what is the future of ethnic nationalities within the confines of, of, a, of a, a nation state? We are in Nigeria, aren't we? What is our future? China started their globalizing agenda by packaging themselves with food. What food? They gave us the fast cooking nodu. Today, there are many girls that are here that cannot make eba. They cannot make amala. The only thing they know how to cook is what? Idomi nodu. That is how China got the world. <coughs> Japanese people got the world with their sushi. People ate sushi before they started buying Japanese electronics. The Indians are beginning to do this with their curry and their biryani. Why can't we do the same with the all quackery, jollof rice and moi moi? One of my Facebook friends wrote a very powerful, popular culture thing. He said, any party without jollof rice is a meeting. It was... You don't really appreciate it until you think deeply about it. The jollof rice is a very common thing that unifies everybody. Why can't we? It's our own. My money is our own. Culture is a war front. It is easy to win cultural wars. Take a look at our party culture, the music, the decor, the coolers of jollof rice, the gorgeous dresses. That's why I'm here like this today. Who doesn't like how I look? We own it, we should codify it, we should globalize it. How do we now tackle the youth question? See, the youth of other cultures are globalizing their culture. Here in Nigeria, our youth do not understand that ethnic identity is the currency of globalization. They hold the erroneous impression that ethnic identity and cosmopolitanism are non-compatible. With the active connivance of you who are here, parents, we are seeing millions of Yoruba youth who cannot speak, read, nor write in their native language. We have a situation where education alienates our youth from their own cultures without accompanying or realistic expectations of the state. They cannot find jobs, they are unable to take entrepreneurial risks, and they are neither able to nor willing to farm. Now, what, is the, what does the future hold? 
my projections into the future. Our lives in the next 50 to 100 years will be almost unrecognizable from what it is today. The internet has changed and democratized communication, learning, and how we control our lives and socialize. Again, we can get out of this if we think and do what is best in the interest of the future generations. If we get our hands together, educate our children to global standards, we will create a Yoruba regional miracle in just 25 years.